Hello, welcome back to Lily's Viking Adventures. Today I will begin reading the Havamal, translated by Benjamin Thorpe, and available in its entirety on archive.org. If you appreciate these readings, please like, share, and comment as it helps me get the content out to more people. Thank you for joining me. I hope it's helpful in your studies and in gaining knowledge. This will likely be recorded in several parts as it's 166 stanzas long. But once fully recorded, I will put them together in one long video. Let's jump right in. The High Ones Lay All doorways before going forward should be looked to, for difficult it is to know where foes may sit within a dwelling. Givers, hail! A guest is come in. Where shall he sit? In much haste is he who on the ways has to try his luck. Fire is needful to him who is come in, and whose knees are frozen. Food and raiment a man requires, whoe'er the fell has traveled. Water to him is needful, who for reflection comes, a towel, an hospitable invitation, a good reception, if he can get it, discourse and answer. Wit is needful to him who travels far. At home all is easy, a laughing stock is he who nothing knows and with the instructed sits. Of his understanding no one should be proud, but rather in conduct cautious. When the prudent and tacturn come to a dwelling, harm seldom befalls the cautious. For a firmer friend no man ever gets than great sagacity. A wary guest who to reflection comes, keeps a cautious silence, with his ears listens and with his eyes observes so explores every prudent man. He is happy, who for himself obtains fame and kind words, less sure is that which a man must have in another's breast. He is happy, who in himself possesses fame and wit while living, for bad counsels have oft been received from another's breast. A better burthen no man bears, on the way, than much good sense, that is thought better than riches in a strange place, such is the recourse of the indignant. A worse provision on the way he cannot carry, than too much beer bibing. So good is not, as it is said, beer for the sons of men. A worse provision no man can take from table than too much beer bibing, for the more he drinks, the less control he has of his own mind. Oblivion's heron, tis called, that over potations hovers. He steals the mind of men with this bird's pinions. I was fettered in Gunlaud's dwelling. Drunk I was, I was overdrunk, at that cunning filars. It's the best drunkenness when every one after it regains his reason. Tacturn and prudent, and in war daring, should a king's children be, joyous and liberal every one should, be until his hour of death. A cowardly man thinks he will ever live, if warfare he avoids, but old age will give him no peace, though spears may spare him. A fool gapes when to a house he comes, to himself mutters or is silent, but all at once if he gets drink, then is the man's mind displayed. He alone knows who wanders wide, and has much experienced by what disposition each man is ruled, who common sense possesses. 
Let a man hold the cup, yet of the mead drink moderately, speak sensibly, or be silent. As of a fault, no man will admonish thee, if thou goest betimes to sleep. A greedy man, if he be not moderate, eats to his mortal sorrow. Oftentimes his belly draws laughter on a silly man, who among the prudent comes. Cattle know when to go home, and then from grazing cease, but a foolish man never knows his stomach's measure. A miserable man and ill-conditioned sneers at everything. One thing he knows not, which he ought to know, that he is not free from faults. A foolish man is all night awake pondering over everything, and then grows tired, and when morning comes, all is lament as before. A foolish man thinks all who on him smile to be his friends. He feels it not, although they speak ill of him, when he sits among the clever. <clears throat> A foolish man thinks all who speak him fair to be his friends, but he will find, if into court he comes, that he has few advocates. A foolish man thinks he knows everything if placed in unexpected difficulty, but he knows not what to answer if to the test he is put. A foolish man who among people comes had best be silent, for no one knows that he knows nothing unless he talks too much. He who previously knew nothing will still know nothing, talk he ever so much. He thinks himself wise who can ask questions and converse. Also, conceal his ignorance no one can, because it circulates among men. He utters too many futile words who is never silent. A garrulous tongue, if it be not checked, sings often to its own harm. For a grazing stock no man shall have another, although he come a stranger to his house. Many a one thinks himself wise if he is not questioned and can sit in a dry habit. Clever thinks himself the guest who jeers a guest. If he takes to fight flight, knows it not certainly he who prates at meat, whether he babbles among foes. Many men are mutually well disposed, yet at table will torment each other. That strife will ever be, guest will guest irritate. Early meals a man should ta often take, unless to a friend's house he goes, else he will sit and mope, will seem half famished, and can a few things inquire. Long is and indirect the way to a bad friend's, though by the road he dwell, but to a good friend's the path lie direct, though he be far away. A guest should depart, not always stay in one place. The welcome becomes unwelcome if he too long continues in another's house. One's own house is best, small though it be. At home is everyone his own master though he but two goats possess, and a straw-thatched cot, even that is better than begging. One's own house is best, small though it be, at home is everyone his own master, bleeding at heart is he, who has to ask for food at every mealtide. Leaving in the fields his arms, let no man go a foot's length forward, for it is hard to know when on the way. A man may need his weapon. I have ever found a man so bountiful or so hospitable that he refused a present, or of his property so, liberal that he scorned a recompense. Of the property which he has gained, no man should suffer need, for the hated oft is spared what for the dear was destined much goes worse than is expected. 
With arms and vestments, friends should each other gladden, those which are in themselves most sightly. Givers and requiters are longest friends, if all goes well. To his friend a man should be a friend, and gifts with gifts requite. Laughter with laughter men should receive, but leasing with lying. To his friend a man should be a friend, to him and to his friend, but of his foe no man shall the friend's friend be. Know if thou hast a friend whom thou fully truest, and from whom thou wouldst good derive thou, shouldest blend thy mind with his, and gifts exchange, and often go to see him. If thou hast another whom thou lit little truest, yet wouldst good from him derive, thou shouldst speak him fair, but think craftily, and leasing pay with lying. But of him yet further, whom thou little truest, and thou suspectest his affection, before him thou shouldst laugh, and contrary to thy thoughts speak, requital should the gift resemble. I was once young, I was journeying alone and lost my way. Rich I thought myself when I met another, man is the joy of man. Liberal and brave, men live best, they seldom cherish sorrow, but a base-minded man dreads everything. The niggardly is uneasy even at gifts. My garments in a field I gave away, two wooden men, heroes they seem to be, when they got cloaks, exposed to insult, is a naked man. A tree withers that on a hilltop stands, protects it neither bark nor leaves, such is the man whom no one favors. Why should he live long? Hotter than fire, love for five days burns between false friends, but is quenched when the sixth day comes and the friendship is all impaired. Something great is not always to be given praise, is often for a trifle bought. With half a loaf and a tilted vessel, I got myself a comrade. Little are the sand grains, little the wits, little the minds of some men, for all men are not wise alike. Men are everywhere by halves. Moderately wise should each one be, but never overwise. Of those men the lives are fairest, we know much well. Moderately wise should each one be, but never overwise. For a wise man's heart is seldom glad, if he is all wise who owns it. Moderately wise should each one be, but never overwise. His destiny let no man beforehand, his mind will be freest from care. Brand burns from brand until it is burnt out. Fire is from fire quickened, man to man, becomes known by speech, but a fool by his bashful silence. He should early rise, who another's property or wife desires to have. Seldom a sluggish wolf gets prey, or a sleeping man victory. Early should rise he who has few workers, and go to his work to see to. Greatly is he retarded who sleeps the morn away. Wealth half depends on energy. Of dry planks and roof shingles a man knows the measure, of the firewood that may suffice both measure and time. Washed and refected, let a man ride to the thing, although his garments be not too good. Of his shoes and breeches let no one be ashamed, nor of his horse, although he have not a good one. Inquire and impart should every man of sense who will be accounted sage. Let one only know, a second may not, if three all the world knows. Gasps and gapes, when to the sea he comes, the eagle over old ocean, so is a man who among many 
comes and has few advocates. His power should every sagacious man use with discretion, for he will find, when among the bold, he comes that no one alone is doughtiest. Circumspect and reserved every man should be, and wary in trusting friends. Of the words that a man says to another, he often pays the penalty. Much too early I came to many places, but too late to others. The beer was drunk or not ready. The disliked seldom hits the moment. Here and there I should have been invited. If I a meal had needed, or two hams had hung, at that true friends, where of one I had eaten. <clears throat> Fire is best among the sons of men, and the sight of the sun, if his health a man can have, with a life free from vice. No man lacks everything, although his health be bad. One in his sons is happy, one in his kin, one in abundant wealth, one in his good works. It is better to live, even to live miserably. A living man can always get a cow. I saw fire consume the rich, man's property, and death stood without his door. The halt can ride on horseback, and one-handed cattle drive, the deaf fight and be useful. To be blind is better than to be burnt. No one gets good from a corpse. A son is better, even if born late, after his father's departure. Gravestones seldom stand by the wayside, unless raised by a kinsman to a kinsman. Two are adversaries. The tongue is the bane of the head. Under every cloak I expect a hand. At night is joyful he who is sure of traveling entertainment. A shipyards are so short. Variable is an autumn night. Many are the weather's changes in five days, but more in a month. He only knows, not who knows nothing, that many a one apes another. One man is rich, another poor. Let him not be thought blameworthy. Cattle die, kindred die, we ourselves also die. But the fair fame never dies of him who has earned it. Cattle die, kindred die, we ourselves also die. But I know one thing that never dies, judgment on each one dead. Full storehouses I saw at Dive's sons, now bear they the beggar's staff. Such are riches as is the twinkling of an eye. Of friends they are most fickle. A foolish man, if he acquires wealth or woman's love, pride grows within him, but wisdom never. He goes on more and more arrogant. Then tis made manifest, if of runes thou questionest him, those to the high ones known, which the great powers invented and the great talker painted, that he had best hold silence. At eve the day is to be praised, a woman after she is burnt, a sword after it is proved, a maid after she is married, ice after it has passed away, beer after it is drunk. In the wind one should hew wood, in a breeze row out to sea, in the dark talk with a lass, many are the eyes of the day, a ship voyages are to be made, but a shield is for protection, a sword for striking, but a damsel for a kiss. By the fire one should drink beer, on the ice slide, buy a horse that is lean, a sword that is rusty, feed a horse at home, but a dog at the farm. In a maiden's words, no one should place faith, nor in what a woman says, for on the turning wheel have their hearts been formed, and guile in their breast been laid. In a creaking bow, a burning flame, a yawning wolf, a chattering crow, a grunting swine, a rootless tree, a waxing wave, 
a boiling kettle. A flying dart, a falling billow, a one night's ice, a coiled serpent, a woman's bed talk or a broken sword, a bear's play or a royal child, a sick calf, a self-willed thrall, a flattering prophetess, a corpse newly slain, a serene sky, a laughing lord, a barking dog, and a harlot's grief. An early sown field let no one trust, nor prematurely in a sun. Weather rules the field and wit the sun, each of which is doubtful. A brother's murder, though on the high road met, a half-burnt house, an over-swift horse. A horse is useless if a leg be broken. No man is confiding as to trust any of these. Such is the love of a woman, who falsehood meditate, as if one drove not roughshod on slippery ice, a spirited two, year, two years old and unbroken horse, or as in a raging storm a helmless ship is beaten or as if the halt were set to catch a reindeer in the thawing fell. Openly I now speak, because I both sexes know, unstable are men's minds towards women. Tis then we speak most fair when we most falsely think. That deceives even the cautious. Fair shall speak and money offer who would obtain a woman's love. Praise the form of a fair damsel he gets who courts her. At love should no one ever wonder in another. A beauteous countenance oft captivates, captivates the wise, which captivates not the foolish. Let no wonder at another's folly. It is the lot of many. All powerful desire makes of the sons of men fools even the wise the mind only knows what lies near the heart that alone is conscious of our affections no disease is worse to a sensible man than not to be content with himself that i experienced when in the reeds i sat awaiting my delight body and soul to me was that discreet maiden nevertheless i possess her not Billings lass on her couch I found, sun bright sleeping, a prince's joy to me seemed not, if not with that form to live. Yet never Eve must thou, Odin, come if thou wilt talk to the maiden over. All will be disastrous unless we alone are privy to such misdeed. I returned thinking to love, at her wise desire. I thought I should obtain her whole heart and love. When next I came, the bold warriors were all awake, with lights burning and bearing torches. Thus was the way to pleasure closed. But at the approach of morn, when again I came, the household all was sleeping. The good damsel's dog alone I found tied to the bed. Many a fair maiden, when rightly known towards men, is fickle. That I experienced when that discreet maiden I strove to seduce, contumely of every kind of wily girl heaped upon me, nor of that damsel gained I aught. At home let a man be cheerful, and towards a guest liberal. Of wise conduct he should be, of good memory and ready speech. If much knowledge he desires, he must often talk on good. Fimbul Fambi, he is called, who little has to say. Such is the nature of the simple. The old Jotun I sought, now I am come back. Little got I there by silence, and many words I spoke to my advantage in Satung's hall. Gunlod gave me on her golden seat a draught of the precious mead, a bad recompense I afterwards made her for her whole soul, her fervent love. Rati's mouth I caused to make a space and to gnaw the rock over and under me where the Jotun's ways. Thus my head did peril. 
Of a well-assumed form I made good use. Few things fail the wise. For Odrer is now come up to the men's earthly dwellings. Tis to me doubtful that I could have come from the Jotun's court, and not Gunlod aided me, that good damsel, over whom I laid my arm. On the day following the Hrimthrasar, to learn something of the High One in the High One's hall. Over Bulwark they inquired whether he with the gods were come or Satang had destroyed him. Odin, I believe, a ring oath gave, who in his faith will trust. Satung defrauded of his drink bereft and Gunlod made to weep. Time tis to discourse from the preacher's chair. By the well of Urd, I sat silent. I saw and meditated. I listened to men's words. Of runes I heard discourse, and of things divine. Nor of graving them were they silent, nor of sage counsels. At the High One's Hall, in the High One's Hall, I thus heard say, I counsel thee, Loden Father to take advice. Thou wilt profit if thou takest it. Rise not at night, unless to explore, or art compelled to go out. I counsel thee, Loden father, to take advice. Thou wilt profit if thou takest it. In an enchantress's embrace, thou mayest not sleep, so that in her arms she clasp thee, she will be the cause that thou carest not for the thing or prince's words. Food will shun and human joyous. Sorrowful wilt thou go to sleep. I counsel thee. Another's wife entice thou never to secret converse. I counsel thee. By fell or firth, if thou have to travel, provide thee well with food. I counsel thee. A bad man bad man let thou never know thy misfortunes for from a bad man thou never wilt obtain a return for thy good will i saw mortally mo wounded a man a wicked woman's words a false tongue caused his death and most unrighteously i counsel thee if thou knowest thou hast a friend whom thou well canst trust go off to visit him for with brushwood overgrown and with high grass is the way that no one treads. I counsel thee, a good man attract to thee a pleasant converse and a salutary speech learn while thou livest. I counsel thee, with thy friend be thou never first to quarrel. Care gnaws the heart of thou to no one canst thy whole mind disclose. I counsel thee, words thou never shouldest exchange with a witless fool. For from an ill-conditioned man thou wilt never get a return for good, but a good man will bring thee favor by his praise. There is a mingling of affection where one can tell another all his mind. Everything is better than being with the deceitful. He is not another's friend who ever says as he s says. I counsel thee, even in three words quarrel not with a worse man. Often the better yields when the worse strikes. I counsel thee, be not a shoemaker nor a shaft maker, unless for thyself it be, for a shoe if ill made, or a shaft if crooked, will call down evil on thee. I counsel thee, wherever of injury thou knowest, regard that injury as thy own, and give to thy foes no peace. I counsel thee, rejoiced at evil be thou never, but let good give thee pleasure. I counsel thee, in a battle look not up, like swine the sons of men then become, that men may not fascinate thee. If thou wilt induce a good woman to pleasant converse, 
thou must promise fair and hold to it. No one turns from good if it can be got. I enjoin thee to be wary, but not over wary, at drinking. Be thou most wary, and with another's wife, and thirdly, that thieves delude thee not. With insult or derision, treat thou never a guest or wayfarer. They often little know who sit within of what race they are who come. Vices and virtues the sons of mortals bear in their breast mingled. No one is so good that no failing attends him, nor so bad as to be good for nothing. At a hoary speaker laugh thou never. Often is good that which the aged utter, oft from a shriveled hide, discreet words you issue. From those whose skin is pendant and decked with scars, and who go tottering among the vile, I counsel thee, rail not at a guest, nor from thy gate thrust him. Treat well the indigent, they will speak well of thee. Strong is the bar that must be raised to admit all. Do thou give a penny, or they will call down on thee every ill in thy limbs. I counsel thee, wherever thou beer drinkest, invoke to thee the power of earth, for earth is good against drink, fire for distempers, the oak for constipation, a corn ear for sorcery, a hall for do domestic strife. In bitter hates invoke the moon, in bitter for bite injuries is good. <clears throat> but runes against calamity, fluid let earth absorb. Odin's Rune Song I know that I hung on the wind rock tree nine whole nights with a spear wounded, and to Odin offered myself to myself on that tree of which no one knows from what root it springs. Bread no one gave me, nor a horn of drink. Downward I peered, to runes applied myself, wailing learnt them, then fell down thence. Potent songs, nine from the famed sun, I learned of Bolthorn, Bestless sire, and a draught obtained of the precious mead drawn from Othrir. When I began to bear fruit, and to know many things, to grow and well thrive, word by word I sought out words, fact by fact I sought out facts. Runes thou wilt find and explained characters, very large characters, very potent characters, which the great speaker depicted, and the high powers formed, and the powers prince graved. Odin among the Asir but among the all, Alfardane and Davalan, for the dwarves, Asvid for the Jotuns, some I myself graved. Knowest thou how to grave them? Knowest thou how to expound them? Knowest thou how to depict them? Knowest thou how to prove them? Knowest thou how to pray? Knowest thou how to offer? Knowest thou how to send? Knowest thou how to consume? Tis better not to pray than too much offer. A gift ever looks to a return. Tis better not to send than too much consume. So Thurid, graved before the origin of men, where he ascended to whence he afterwards came. Those songs I know which the king's wife knows not, nor son of man. Help the first is called, for that will help thee against strifes and cares. For the second I know what the sons of men require, who will as leeches live. For the third I know, if I have great need to restrain my foes, the weapon's edge I deaden of my adversaries, nor arms, nor wiles harm aught. For the fourth I know, if men place bonds on my limbs, I so sing that I can walk, the fetter starts from my feet, and the manacle from my hands. 
For the fifth I know, if I see a shot from a hostile hand, a shaft flying amid the host, so swift it cannot fly that I cannot arrest it, if only I get sight of it. For the sixth I know, if one wounds me with a green tree's root, also if a man declares hatred to me, harm shall consume them sooner than me. For the seventh I know, if a lofty house I see blaze, or its inmates, so furiously it shall not burn that I cannot save it. That song I can sing. For the eighth I know, what to all is useful to learn, where hatred grows among the sons of men, that I can quickly assuage. For the ninth I know, if I stand in need, my bark on the water to save, I can the wind on the waves allay, and the sea lull. For the tenth I know, if I see troll wives sporting in air, I can so operate that they will forsake their own forms and their own minds. For the eleventh I know, if I have to lead my ancient friends to battle, under their shields I sing, and with power they go safe to the fight, safe from the fight, safe on every side they go. For the twelfth I know, if on a tree I see a corpse swinging from a halter, I can so grave in the runes depict that the man shall walk and with me converse. For the thirteenth I know, if on a young man I sprinkle water, he shall not fall, though he into battle come, that man shall not sink before swords. For the fourteenth I know, if in the society of men I have to enumerate the gods, Asir and Alfar, I know the distinctions of all this few unskilled can do. For the fifteenth I know what the dwarf Theodrerer sang before Delling's doors. Strength he sang to the Asir, and to the Alfar prosperity, wisdom to Hraptatir. For the sixteenth I know, if a modest maiden's favor and affection I desire to possess, the soul I change of the white-armed dam damsel, and wholly turn her mind. For the seventeenth I know, that the young maiden will reluctantly avoid me, these songs, Loden father. Thou wilt long have lacked, yet it may be good if thou understandest them, profitable if thou learnest them. For the eighteenth I know, that which I never teach to maid or wife of man, all is better what one only knows. This is the closing of the songs, save her alone who clasps me in her arms, or is my sister. Now are sung the High One's songs in the High One's hall, to the sons of men all useful, but useless to the Jotun sons. Hail to him who has sung them, hail to him who knows them, may he profit who has learnt them. Hail to those who have listened to them. That is the end. I actually got through all of it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Like, comment, sub. I appreciate it.